Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to look at the differences in Photoshop Elements, Adobe Camera Raw plugin, and Lightroom. Now in the last video I showed you how to access Adobe Camera Raw using Photoshop Elements. And we did that using the file menu and going to open. On the older versions there's an actual open as. In Photoshop Elements 9 on the Mac it's just open. So select your photo, go to format, change it to Camera Raw, and select open. There's how we get to the Camera Raw interface. I described all the different slider bars and what they do, and this is a great way for a photographer to quickly change some of the settings that you might have and enhance your pictures. Now, let's go ahead and jump over to Lightroom and I'll show you some of the similarities and some of the differences. Now in Lightroom, in the development tab or the development column right here, you'll notice that there's the exact same adjustments. Temperature and tint, you've got your exposure, brightness, contrast, clarity, vibrance, saturation, and down here we have sharpening. There are a lot more features, but I'm going to show you one of the main differences just on import. When we go to library and we want to import something from an SD card or from a compact flash card, we can go over to the import and we're going to import this into our catalog. I'm going to select a folder and this could be an SD card or a compact flash card. As a default, it automatically checks all photos and you want to be able to import those. You have the option of not importing any selected suspected duplicates right here. Then I'm going to copy these right here. And I want to make a second copy and the reason why I want to do that is I want to make a second copy that goes to a folder called RAW. I think you should always keep your original RAW photos with no adjustments put on them. Then we're going to select the apply during import we're going to go down to this drop down box and this is a really nice one. We can create presets. I know some of you like to go in there and bump up the clarity and bump up the vibrance of your photos some and maybe even do a little bit of sharpening. We can create one of these presets and apply that to every single picture as we are importing them and we could have them saved into another folder. So under the structure on my hard drive you will see one that says raw and another one that says edits. So that way you have the original photo that you can go back to and then you have another photo that has had some sharpening applied, a little bit of clarity and a little bit of vibrance applied. The other nice thing about this is as you are importing them you can create a preset to automatically put your name and your copyright information, your contact information and you can also go in and create some keywords. I'm not going to save this but you can also put some keywords and have it apply all these keywords. So if it's a single event, maybe you went to the Tough Mudder in Allentown, Pennsylvania, you could put keywords, Tough Mudder, Race, Obstacle Course, and things like that, and you could have that apply all these keywords. I know a lot of us don't put keywords on things, and this just makes it a little bit easier because we only have to put it once, and then we can apply it to all the photos during import. Let's go ahead and cancel that on the import. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the develop tab right here. These are kind of like tabs, library develop. You can create a slideshow, you can get these ready for print, and you can even create a web page on that. But I'm going to mainly concentrate on the develop tab that we have right here. Now, obviously I took this picture, it looks a little bit yellow, even though I had it set on auto, um, or I had the white balance set on flash it still was a little bit yellow. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and we can change our tint. If you remember, the temperature slider was blue to yellow. So if I want to cool this down just a little bit and change the white balance so that it's more like it actually was when I took the picture, I'm going to slide that to the left. And then I can adjust this to magenta and pink using the tint. So maybe I want to have a little bit of a tint right there. And I'm done. Now the exposure is a little bit hot right here. The whole exposure is a little bit hot so I could bring that exposure down just a little bit. If you remember what the recovery did, that was recovers the highlights. So as you are looking at some of the highlights here, I drag this over to the right and then I can recover some of my highlights. Now remember this black, what it does is it sets the black tone. So if I have anything that should be black, I can swing this to the right and it will make it black. The clarity slider makes things a little bit clear, gives it a little bit of definition here, and we can choose the vibrance to give it a little pop there. Now, 
This is where it also gets a little bit different because you can adjust the tone curve right here. You can also use these sliders. Maybe you want the highlights to pop, but you want to give it some definition. So you want to bring this down a little bit right here on the lights. You want to bring some of the darks. You want to make them a little bit lighter, maybe some of these shadows. But then you want to take the shadows and you want to make them nice and black. So now we kind of have this strange curve that we have right here. You can also pull this curve and you can kind of make an S curve if you want. I know a lot of you do that in Photoshop already. So you could bring this as a nice S curve. What that does is it kind of gives it a little bit of contrast here by bumping up some of the lights and then dropping some of the darks right here. So you can see that there's kind of an S curve. So you can either change it by region or you can change it by this curve. Now here's where you get into the hue saturation lightness and you can sit here and maybe if somebody's a little bit too red, I notice sometimes when you're taking pictures people have uh, red cheeks or real pink cheeks, you can take some of the hue out of just the red and that will bring back some of their facial tones. Sometimes they may be a little bit too magenta or you can take some of the saturation out of the red right here. You can either change the saturation of the or the hue of the red and slide that over more a little bit to the orange side or you can just take down some of the saturation or the redness in their cheeks. And then we go down here. This is the same detail as far as sharpening. It gives you a little more adjustments here. We had the same four in an Adobe Camera Raw and we had luminance and color but we also have some information on how to preserve the detail right there. The last thing that we have is the post crop vignette. You can see that right here some of the lightness dropped off right in the corner so it's starting to produce a vignette. I'm going to exaggerate that so that you can see that but let me drop it the other way. Sometimes you get this effect right there when you, especially when you have either a cheap lens or you're trying to go too wide a lot of times the light doesn't go in the corners. So what you could do is you could bump that back up just a little bit and try to remove some of that by adding a little bit of post crop vignette. And right here you can see the amount whether or not you wanted round the edges to be round, how much rounded you want and how much feathering you want. So there is your post crop vignette. You also have the lens corrections which is really nice because you can go in here and you can uh, change the vertical and horizontal so maybe if you were taking a picture of a building and you wanted to correct that picture of the building you could take the vertical and you could actually straighten the building out which is a really nice feature that you have just as in Adobe Camera Raw with Photoshop Elements Lightroom does the same thing in the fact that it only applies the corrections or the adjustments and it creates a little file and it doesn't save it so your picture hasn't actually changed yet. In order to make the picture change you actually have to go and select file and then export. When you export it it even gives you more options to go here. It can put it in another subfolder as you can see I put mine in one that's called edits and then I also rename mine to a custom name and then I just export that to my desktop or my external hard drive. What's nice is, is that you can also, if you are uploading these to the internet or if you are emailing these, you can actually take the quality down or you can limit the file size to a specific file size. So maybe you only want to make a 2 kilobyte file or a 20 kilobyte file, whatever it is, this will automatically change the settings for you so that you can adjust your file size down to something that's manageable in email. So the main part or the main differences that I covered today were the import features when you go to import over here there are some import features when you click on files that you want to import you can go in and you can select copy and you can make a second copy to that you can also apply some presets you can add metadata to this and keywords and put them in another subfolder. The last thing I'm going to cover right before I sign off is the fact that there are presets. When you go into the develop mode there are Lightroom presets. Now I get a lot of mine from Lightroom Killer Tip 
kit tips, which is uh, Matt Kozlowski over there. And as you can see, it gives you a preview of all the different presets that come with Lightroom, as well as ones that you can download from another one. Maybe you want aged photo, bleach bypass. But one of them over here is a real nice one, and you can get one that says punch, general punch, right here. So if you were importing all of your photos and you wanted to give a general punch to your photos, every single one of them, when you're under the library command and you go to import and you do the import right here and you go to develop settings, you can go over to punch right here and every single photo that you have checked when it is being imported, it will give a general punch to those particular photos. So this is Chucky from Digital Goulash. I hope you learned something today. If you want to make the jump to Lightroom, go ahead. If you happen to be part of an educational institution, I believe you can get it for about 100 bucks, and go to something like Academic Superstore or one of those and buy it there. But Adobe Lightroom is definitely worth adding to your software library. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos. This is Chucky. Cheers.